What is going on guys? Welcome to this video. In today's episode, we're going to develop a TCP chat in Python. So we're going to set up a server and we're going to set up multiple clients and these clients can then connect to the server, which uh, works as a chat room, you could say. And each client can then send messages to the server with his or her nickname and all the other clients can see these messages and respond. So let us get into the code. Now, before we actually start programming, as always, I need to mention that we have a blog post on neural9.com here. So if you're interested in a text-based version of this tutorial, you can just check out the blog post on neural9.com. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a server file. So we're going to right-click onto the directory and create a server.py file. And in here, we're going to import threading, import threading and import sockets. These are the two modules that we're going to need in this video. And if you don't know how to work with sockets or you don't know what sockets are, you don't know what uh, multi-threading is, I highly recommend that you check out the Python Intermediate Tutorial Series on this channel because there I talk about network programming, about multi-threading, what uh, these things are. I also have a tutorial on how to make a port scanner, a uh, multi-threaded port scanner where I use both concepts. So check out these videos. Uh, because I'm not going to go too much into the details of threading or sockets in this video. Now, the first thing that we need to do here is we need to define a host address and a port for our server. So the host in this case will be just uh, 127.0.0.1 because we're using localhost. So let's add a comment here, localhost. Um, this is just because we are running this on our machine. If you run this server on a web server, you should always... Uh, pick the host address of the server. So always the IP address of the server. Uh, this is just the basic local host. Since we're running it on this computer, it uh, will be local host. Then we need a port and as a port, you can choose whatever you want. You could just go with 99872 or something like that. Um, what you shouldn't do is you shouldn't take ports like 80 because this is uh, HTTP and you should just not pick any reserved ports or well-known ports at all. So, uh, just don't choose any ports from uh, 1 to, I don't know, I think 10,000 or something. But we're just going to go with 55,555. This is a solid port. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to start the server. So we're going to say server equals uh, socket dot socket. And in here we're going to say it's an internet socket. So socket dot AF inet. And then we're going to say it's uh, socket.sockstream. So again, if you don't know what that means, uh, oh, sorry, socket.sockstream. If you don't know what that is, and if you don't know uh, why we're creating a socket in that way, check out the intermediate tutorial series. There we talk about these concepts. So next thing is we need to bind the server to the host and the IP address. So we say server.bind and we pass a tuple of host and port. So we're saying, okay, the server is bound to the local host on port 55555. Five, uh, five, 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 five. I think this was five times five, hopefully. Uh, then we say server.listen, which basically puts our server into listening mode for a new connections. So as soon as we say server.listen, the server starts listening for incoming connections. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to define a couple of methods. We're going to define three methods. The first one being a broadcast method. The second one being a uh, handle method for client connections. And the last one being a receive method, which basically combines all the methods into a main method, you could say. But before we do that, we're going to define two empty lists here. And these two empty lists are the clients list and the nicknames list. So, these two lists will be the lists uh, where we put all of our clients in. So if we have a new client connecting to the server, we're going to put it into the clients list. And also we're going to get the nickname of this client, which the client can uh, then later on choose. And we're going to say, okay, the client uh, X has the nickname, uh, I don't know, Bob or something like that. Uh, and then we can just use clients and nicknames to do certain things later on. Now, the first function that we're going to define here is the broadcast function. It's a very simple function. It's just a function that sends a message to all the clients that are currently connected to this server. So we're going to say def broadcast, and we're going to pass a message here. So we're going to say broadcast message, and then we're just going to say for every client in the clients list, which now is empty, but later on we're going to fill it up. For every client that is now connected to the server, we're just going to say client.send this message. 
Very simple, we're just getting all the clients and sending a particular message. And this is how you broadcast messages from a server to all the clients. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna handle the client connection. So when a client connects to the server, we wanna receive messages from the client if the client is sending any, and then we also want to uh, send back messages to all the other clients depending on what the client sends. So if client A says, hi, we wanna get this message, process it, and then broadcast it to all the other clients, including uh, also client A itself, because every client needs to see what's happening in the server. So what we wanna do is we wanna define a handle function and we wanna handle one particular client. So we're, we're going to later on run this function on all of the individual clients, but for now we're just handling one uh, single client. So we're getting the client and what we do is we say while true, basically we're starting an endless loop here, we're saying try a certain thing. So as long as it works without giving you an exception or an error, we're going to just say message equals client dot receive I think it's like that, R-E-C-V, uh, 1024 bytes, just the basic method uh, message. So what we do here is we say, okay, as long as it works that we receive a message from the client, we're just going to broadcast it to all the other um, clients. Or, oh, sorry, no, uh, broadcast a message to all the other clients. So what we're doing here is we say, try to receive a message from the client, and if that succeeds, broadcast this message to all the other clients, including this client as well. Uh, if that doesn't work, so if we get some exception, some error while receiving the message or while broadcasting, what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, cut the connection to this particular client, remove it from the list, and then uh, basically terminate this function. So we're going to say, or terminate this loop. So we're going to say the index of this particular client is the clients.index of this client and we need this index in order to remove the nickname and the client from the list. So we're just getting the index, okay, where is this particular client that failed right now in the list? Which index does it have? And then we're going to say clients.remove client. So we're going to just remove the client. We're going to close the connection to the client. And then we're also going to say, okay, the nickname of this client is the nicknames index of the client. So basically, Whenever we are adding a client, we're also adding the nickname, so they will always have the same index. And when we remove a client, we also remove the nickname on this particular index so that we don't get any inconsistencies here. So what we do then is we say nicknames dot remove uh, nickname. And you could either print it before that, I'm going to print it before that, or you can print it afterward. We're just going to broadcast to all the clients that this client has now left. So we're going to say broadcast, and we're going to use an F string here, and we're going to say nickname uh, left the chat, for example. Um, and then we're going to encode this message in ASCII code so that we get the right message. So after that, of course, we're breaking out of the loop and that's it. So we're handling a client, one client connects, and what we're doing is we're constantly trying to get messages from this client. Uh, this will not give you an error if the client is not sending anything, but it will give you an error if this client is not there anymore. So as soon as a client uh, produces some kind of error, what we do is we just remove it from the list, remove the nickname, and broadcast to all the different uh, clients connected to the server that this client has now left, and then we just terminate this function. So this function will later on run in a thread. For each client, we'll have a single thread running and processing this particular function or actually executing the handle function. And as soon as a client disconnects, what we do is we just break this um, loop and therefore terminate the function, therefore terminate or end the thread. So this is how we're going to handle the client uh, connection. So now last but not least in the server, what we're going to do is we're going to define the main method, the receive method, which combines all these things that we've written up until now into one function. So we're going to say def receive and we're going to just receive client connection. So we're saying while true, what the server is doing, it is basically accepting all the connections. So uh, we're going to say client and address equals server.accept. So what's happening is we're running the accept method all the time 
And if this method gets a connection, what we uh, get, what it returns is a client and the address of the client. So in this case, we're always going to have the same address since we're on one computer. But if you have this running on a server, you'll see the address, the IP address of this client connecting to your server. So basically we're connecting to clients or we're allowing the clients to connect. And if this is done, if this happens, if a client connects, we're just going to say print uh, on the server itself. This is not a broadcast. This is just on the server console so that we see what's happening. Um, connected with, and let's make an F string out of this, connected with address. So that we know, actually we should say str address uh, double D. There you go. So we're waiting for a connection. We're accepting all the connections coming. And if a connection happens to come, uh, in fact, come in this moment, what we do is we just print that we now connected to this client uh, on this particular address. And then, of course, what we want to do is we want to get the nickname of the client. So the client will be able, before it connects to our server, to choose a nickname. And it will then, it will then be the nickname that is displayed on the server. Uh, so what we need to do first is we need to ask the client for the nickname because of course if it just sends us a message We're going to process it But the first message that the client sends to us should be the nickname So what we're going to say is we're going to send a message to this client and this message will be a code word Which is not visible to the user of the client. It's just visible to the client itself later on in the code We're going to send the keyword Nick and if the client receives this keyword Nick it should be um, it should be informed that it should send the nickname to the server so that the server knows who are you. So we're going to say encode ASCII again, and we're basically just sending this keyword. And in the next step, what we hope to receive from the client is the nickname itself. So we're going to say client.receive, and we're going to receive 1024 bytes and decode them from ASCII. So then, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to say nicknames dot append nickname and clients dot append client. And then what we need to do is we just need to send a couple of messages here. So we're going to say, OK, print nickname of the client is OK. So there you go. Nickname of the client is and then nickname of the client uh, of the client just connected is whatever and then we're just going to broadcast that so that everyone every client that is currently connected to the server knows that this client is now connected and that's the nickname of this client so we're just going to say f string um, nickname joined the chat and we're going to encode this message again and then every server uh, sorry every client knows that there is a new client in this chat and they get a message that this ch uh, client just joined the chat with the respective nickname and then we're going to send the particular client that just connected we're going to send to the one client that uh, this client connected to the server so we're going to say sent uh, connected to the server so that the client knows that it's now connected and it can start chatting. And of course, we're going to encode this message as well. Now we're almost done. The last two things that we're going to do is we're going to define a thread and run a thread. So we're going to say thread. As we said, we're going to run one thread for each client connected because we need to handle them uh, at the same time. We cannot just handle them serially because uh, one client might send something and another client might send something and we need to process it at the same time or at least uh, roughly at the same time and not just you know process one client interaction then start with the next one uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say threading dot threat uh, capital t and the target of this thread will be the handle function and the arguments will be just client and then we're going to say threat dot start and if you know about uh, if you know how to deal with python threads you know that you need to use the start method and not the run method because otherwise this doesn't work so let's uh look one more time uh, at this code what we're doing is we're just saying accept clients all the time 
when a client actually connects, we're going to just say, okay, connected with this client so that the server admin knows what's happening. Then we're going to send to the client the keyword Nick or the code word Nick so that the client knows, okay, I need to send my nickname. We're then going to receive the nickname from the client, append this nickname and this client to our lists. And then we're going to print on the server again for the server admin that the nickname of this client is whatever. Then we're going to broadcast to all the clients connected to the server that this client with this nickname now joined the chat. We're going to send a message to the particular client that the connection was successful. And then we're going to start a thread handling the connection to this particular client. So now we can actually start coding the client. But before we do that, I need to add one more line here. The receive method also needs to be called because we defined all this, but we didn't run it. So the receive method is our main method and it runs down here. Uh, we could actually also go ahead and run the server, but you're not going to see anything. But a good sign is that uh, it's running and not crashing, so it probably works. But for the server to do something, of course, we need a client uh, to connect to it because otherwise it's not going to do anything. Uh, what we could do is we could just print out the message um, server is listening, listening, dot, 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 and then it... You can see the server is listening and that's how you run the server. Now, the next thing is we need to define the client. So we're going to say client.py and here also we're going to import socket and import threading. And we're also going to define a socket. So we're going to say client equals socket dot socket af, oh, sorry, socket dot af inet and socket dot sock stream. There you go. And now instead of binding the client to uh, a port and a host, we're going to connect it to a ho uh, host and a port. So we're going to say client dot connect and we're going to connect it to localhost. So 127.0.0.1 and we're going to connect it on port 55555. And now we're connecting it to the server. So in this line, when this line gets executed, the server will receive, uh, will trigger the accept method and the client is now connected to the server. So what we're going to do in this client is we're going to define two methods and run two threads simultaneously. So we're going to receive all the time data from the server. So we're going to have a receive function that's running constantly. And at the same time, we're going to, um, to send messages or we need a thread running for all the messages that we're going to send. So let's start with the receiving part, define a function receive and this function is just running again in a while true loop. And we're going to try something all the time. And what we're going to try is we're going to receive messages from the server. So in this case, uh, we'll say client.receive, but the client is actually receiving from the server. So what we're going to do is we're going to say message equals client.receive. Just don't get confused. We're still receiving from the server, not from the client. But uh, for the server to send messages, it uses a client, so it could be considered a client. So we're receiving 1024 bytes and we're decoding what we receive. And that's basically it. Now what we need to do is we need to check if the message that we just received is Nick or something else. So we're going to say, okay, if message equals Nick, which is the keyword for sending the nickname, we're going to send the nickname. I'm just going to pass here because we need to uh, get the nickname first in the beginning of the script. Uh, and if it's not nickname, what we're going to do is we're just going to print the message. So whenever we get a message from the server, that's not Nick or any other keyword that we define. We're just going to print the message because we're not going to do anything about it. We just want to see what the server has to tell us. So we're going to say message print or print message. If that doesn't work, what we're going to do is we're just going to close the connection. So we're going to say uh, an error occurred and I think double R, I'm not sure. Oh man, I think it's <laughs> misspelled. Yeah, double R. Uh, an error occurred and uh, then we're just going to close the connection. So we're going to say client close and we're going to break this endless loop. Now, how are we going to send a nickname? First of all, we need the nickname. So we're going to say nickname equals input 
choose a nickname. So whenever we run a client, the first thing that we want to do is we want to choose a nickname. And if the message equals Nick, what we're going to do is we're going to say client dot sent. And we're going to send the nickname, the encoded version to the server. So what's happening here is the server is listening all the time. The client is choosing a nickname, connects to the server. And the moment this happens, this gets triggered. We say connected with whomever. And the first thing that the server then does is it sends the keyword Nick. So we're going to get the keyword Nick. We're going to send the client name or the nickname. Then we're going to receive it here, append it uh, and whatever. And then we're having a connection. And as soon as the server sends something to us, we're going to receive it and print it onto our screen. Now let's finish off the client by defining the second function, which is the write function. And what this function does is it runs a while loop as well, an endless loop. And here what we do is we always define a new message. So we're going to say message equals um, f string. And here we're going to say nickname colon and then the actual message. The actual message is always what the user puts into the script. So oh, I need to use double quotation marks here. Um, what we're doing here is we're constantly running new input functions. So as soon as the user clicks enter and sends one input, we ask for the next one. So the user, the only option that the user has is to either close the client or write new messages. So we are always uh, waiting for new messages. This is a threat. Uh, receive and write will run simultaneously and the write function is always waiting for a new message. And you send a message by clicking the enter key. And once you get a message, so once you click enter or press enter, what happens is you say client dot sent and we're sending the message, of course, encoded. And that's basically it. That's the whole function. And now what we need to do is we need to run two threads. We need to run a receive thread and a write thread. So we're going to say receive thread equals uh, threading dot thread with a target function of receive. We don't need any arguments here. And then we're going to say receive thread dot start. And then we're going to do the same thing for the writing thread. So write thread equals threading dot thread. And the target here is the write function. And we're going to start this thread as well. And now we're done with that. But uh, the problem here is that in PyCharm, we can only run uh, one client at a time and to see how this works we need to run one server and two clients so I'm going to run this in a command line right now. So right here I navigated three terminals into the direction of the TCP chat and what I'm going to do on the left side here this will be a server and these two right terminals here are going to be um, the clients so I'm going to just say python server.py and as you can see server is listening and here we're just going to say Python client. And we can choose a nickname. So for example, let's say neural nine is the nickname. And as you can see, we get connected with uh, the IP address and the port nickname of the client is neural nine. I can see here on the right neural nine joined the chat because this is a broadcast message that gets sent uh, to all the clients, including myself. Uh, and also connected to the server. And now we can run a second client. So we say Python um, client.py. And I can choose a nickname here. Let's say YouTube audience. So you guys. And you can see I get here again connected. Nickname is YouTube audience. Here I see YouTube audience joined to chat, connected to server. And here on Neural9, I can see uh, YouTube audience joined the chat. So I can say hi or hey YouTube. And then what happens here in the server? I don't see anything because the server is just monitoring the connections. And here on the client side, I see hey YouTube from myself. But also the YouTube audience here sees hey YouTube from Neural9. So it can answer hey, what's up? And I can also see it up here. And I can also start spamming here if I want. And you'll see it in both uh, clients. So this is how you do a professional advanced chat. Of course, you could also add some uh, special commands like kick or ban or, I don't know, emojis or something. But uh, this is a basic version of a chat room.
Now that's it for today's video. I really enjoyed this project and I think it's pretty cool. If you want to see more about this project, so if you want me to add more features like kicking or banning or anything like that, uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll do a part two or part three on this and extend this chat into something bigger. Uh, if you want that, let me know. Uh, otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, hit the like button, let me know in the comments. And if you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below, also to give feedback. Uh, and of course, if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to this channel to see more future videos for free. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.